Hi, today we are going to be going over this problem from the IIT JEE 2008. It's widely regarded as the hardest IIT problem ever for math. If you want to pause the video and give the problem a try, you can do so now. Now that I hope you've given the problem a try, here's how to do it. The problem says, let Sn be this summation from k equals 1 to n of n over n squared plus kn plus k squared. And let Tn be the same expression, but starting from k equals 0 all the way up to n minus 1. That's a bit of an interesting difference. Then it asks for n equals 1, 2, 3, so for all naturals, which of these bounds holds? The answer could be one or two or three or four options. First thing to note, the fact that it's 0 to n minus 1 and 1 to n it sort of gives us a hint towards uh, step functions in Riemann summations. So maybe something about approximating with rectangles because you can start with an over approximation or you can start with an under approximation. Perhaps that's related. For now, let's try to calculate some values. Let's see what S, S1 is. So that would be n equals 1. That's just plugging in k and n to be 1. That would be 1 over 3. Let's see what t of 1 is. That would just be plugging k equals 0 and n as 1. That would give me 1. Okay. Now, for just curiosity's sake, let's try to play around with the Riemann sum idea that we had. First off, let's sort of factor off n squared from the bottom. So we would have s of n equals the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over n times 1 over 1 plus k over n plus k over n whole squared. If I did take the limit as n went from infinity of this, so the limit as n goes to infinity of this, I see that I can get a Riemann sum here because, well, this summation is essentially 1 over n times sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over 1 plus k over n plus k over n whole squared, right? And if I do take the limit as n goes to infinity by the Riemann definition of an integral, which I have made a post about, if you want to revise, you can check the post out in the description. This would simply be the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x plus x squared. So, this is an integral that we can do quite fast. Let me just do it here. And if you're preparing for the JEE, you'd know how to do this quite fast. Completing the square, we'd get this expression. And uh, by using the standard uh, integral formulas, we get that this is going to be 2 over the square root of 3 times arctangent of 2 over root 3 times x plus 1 over 2 from 0 to 1. Well, at x equals 1, that's going to be uh, 2 over root 3 times. That's 3 over 2. Cancels out with the square root of 3. So you get the arctangent of root 3 minus 2 over th root 3 times the arctangent of 1 over root 3. Now, if you do have your common tangent and sine and cosine angle memorized, which you probably do if you're appearing for the JEE, you know this would be 2 over the root 3 of pi over 3 minus pi over 6, which is 2 over the root 3 times pi over 6, and that's going to be pi over 3 root 3. And now you might notice that this was exactly the expression that we had here. So there is something to do with increasing and decreasing functions. Let's investigate this a bit more. We know that the limit as uh, n goes to infinity of uh, s of n equals also the limit as n goes to infinity of t of n, which is pi over 3 root 3. Uh, s of n, s of 1 is 1 over 3, and t of 1 is 1. Let's, we clearly, well, we know that pi is uh, greater than 3. So, well, this, 
So we know that one over three. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we know that if if I do pi over three over root three over one over three, I'm gonna get pi over the square root of three, which is greater than one. So we do know that this expression here is greater than s of one for sure. What about it being greater than one? Well, pi over three root three. Let's just say I had to compare it with one. It was some question operator for, for example if I did square both sides I'd get pi squared over 27 question mark 1 and then I can multiply both sides by the same thing so that's pi we know pi squared is less than uh, 27 because pi is less than 4 so we know that this should be less than okay so an interesting thing now is that pi over 3 root 3 is bigger than s of 1 Whereas pi over 3 root 3 is less than t of 1. And they both, the limit of both of these, s of n and t of n, is pi over 3 root 3. So perhaps if we can just show that they are constantly increasing or decreasing functions, we're done. And uh, if I'm being honest, at this moment uh, in the IIT JEE exam where time constraint is a real issue, you should probably just go with your intuition and uh, s notice that for s of uh, for s of one, this would be what the graph looked like, and for t of one, uh, for t of n, sorry, s of n, this should be for t of n, where I start from one and go down to pi over three root three. This would be what the graph would look like. So your answer would be, well, s of n is always less than uh, pi over three root three, and it reaches up to pi, uh, pi over 3 root 3 as the limit is taken to infinity so this should be one answer and t of n is always bigger than pi over 3 root 3 and it goes all the way down as the limit as n goes to infinity is taken but of course we're also going to prove that this is the case the the mystery lies in k equals 0 to n minus 1 and k equals 1 to n Let's say we had to approximate the function 1, sorry, we had to approximate the integral of the function 1 over 1 plus x plus x squared from 0 to 1. Add 0, this is clearly 1, and add 1, this would be 1 over 3. So it's, it's, it's a graph that looks like this. This is, this is clearly continuous and decreasing. Now, if I did choose a summation from k equals 0 and you'll have to look at my Riemann summation uh, post in the description to understand this, but if k equals 0 was chosen, the Riemann approximation would look something like this. You know, with this being the n rectangles. We see that clearly this is bigger than the approximation, or sorry, clearly this is bigger than the actual area, so tn is greater than pi over 3 root 3. If I did start from k equals 1, that would mean I'd be making these boxes and starting like this. So clearly that's smaller than the actual area itself is. This is an under approximation, so we know that s of n is less than pi over 3 root 3. So again, now we've ver ver verified that, okay, a and d is actually what the answer is. In the actual IITJE exam, you'd probably have to rely on intuition and do a lot of the explanation and all much quicker because I don't think you get around 10 minutes for a problem. But anyways, that was an interesting problem and let me know in the comments if you are actually giving the IITJE anytime soon.